What I consider to be one of South America's most potentially dangerous volcanoes is showing increased signs of unrest. This volcano known as Cerro Machin has erupted quite infrequently in recent times, but when it has erupted it has almost always produced incredibly powerful explosive eruptions. In this aspect, Cerro Machin is much like Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, El Chichon in Mexico, or Apoyacu in Nicaragua. The largest of these recent eruptions not only distributed a layer of ash over much of Colombia, but also created pyroclastic flows which scorched areas as far away as 40 kilometers or 24.9 miles from its source. That pyroclastic flow deposit, dated to 3600 years ago, occurred in an eruption which also produced lahars that reached large portions of Ibagu, a city now home to half a million residents. This is why any unrest at Suromachin is taken seriously, such as what just occurred. On March 23rd at 2.25 a.m. local time, a rapid succession of earthquakes began which were centered at shallow depths underneath the volcano. An earthquake swarm was now ongoing, and soon two earthquakes large enough to be felt by nearby residents struck, registering in as magnitudes 4.2 and 4.0. During the next five hours, a total of 280 earthquakes struck, all of which were not tectonic but rather volcanic in origin. These quakes struck underneath the western section of Cerro Machin's summit caldera in largest lava dome at an unusually shallow depth of 4 kilometers. So, is magma rapidly rising to the surface at this very location, hence why Cerro Machin is at an alert level of yellow? Not exactly. While the two magnitude 4 range earthquakes were unusually strong for volcano tectonic or VT earthquakes, there is not yet an immediate or urgent cause for concern. Since 2005, Cerro Machin has been experiencing an ever slow but steady increase in activity which can be attributed to fresh magma pooling in its magma chamber at 5 to 9 kilometers depth. What started as an increase in the rate of earthquakes in 2005 was followed by an increasing magmatic signature in fumarolic gases in 2011. This was subsequently followed by increased carbon dioxide and radon emissions in 2013, increased fumarole temperatures in 2016, and the appearance of a patch of ground in 2023 with no vegetation that contained a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius or 203 degrees Fahrenheit. While the recent earthquake swarm might seem like a natural progression of this increasing activity, it instead just marks a temporary spike of an intensity which has occurred about once every six years. Magnitude 4 range earthquakes struck in the exact same place underneath Cerro Machin's edifice in both 2010 and 2022, occurring alongside strong earthquake swarms. These earthquake swarms are caused by underlying fresh magma at 7 km depth which may have partially ascended to 5 km depth since 2005. This magma heats underlying hydrothermal fluids causing them to expand and sometimes even flash to steam. This places increased strain on pre-existing faults along with lubricating them more than usual triggering the generation of volcano tectonic earthquakes. Magma is not actively rising to the surface at the present. As for the earthquake swarm, most quakes largely represented aftershocks from the two larger earthquakes which struck. In other words, nothing truly major has changed at the Cerro Machin volcano in the last month, with these stronger earthquakes merely being an infrequent feature of unrest that began 19 years ago. A volcanic eruption, in my opinion, is highly unlikely to occur now or soon at Machin, especially since it did not erupt during or shortly after the last two magnitude 4 earthquakes. However, the continuing unrest at Cerro Machin is something geologists are keeping an eye on in the long term. The destructive prehistoric eruptions of Machin are one reason why it was one of the first volcanoes within Colombia to receive monitoring equipment. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Tom Olson for supporting this channel.